All right, so we have another uh, ladder logic example We're using a 3D simulator. So we will be simulating the whole process to give you a step-by-step -step and easy to understand method to learn. Now, uh, this is using uh, Studio 5000 in uh, version 35. So uh, just keep in mind, I am using an emulator and uh, this is going to have, uh, we'll let's briefly talk about rung zero and rung one. Again, we start out with rung zero. Um, this is going to have the start push button, the stop push button, the uh, emergency stop push button, which is right here. You can see these do all work. Um, so with that said, and then the conveyor. So conveyor three would be the conveyor and it is uh, indicated that it will run in reverse. Um, that is the direction of that conveyor it just so happens to be. So just keep in mind. Um, now we have the start push button when it's pressed, the light will come on and the stop push button as well. So you can see the light does cut on when that stop push button is pressed. So these do all work at all, it is all functioning. So uh, to talk about again, rung zero, when the start push button is pressed and the stop push button is not pressed or the emergency stop button is not pressed, then the conveyor will then turn on and seal itself in until the stop button push button is pressed or the emergency stop push button is pressed meaning that will turn on the conveyor and seal itself in now rung one will actually go in and uh, have make sure that the conveyor is running then it will say if pe1 uh, which is this pe right over here the photo i1 right so photo i1 if it's if it's detected then what it's going to do is it's going to advance the pusher. So all the tall boxes, what's going to happen is all the tall boxes will get pushed um, to the, the next conveyor and then all the short boxes will continue through the system. So um, I'll briefly talk about this as this system runs. So we're going to start the system up. You're going to see the photo eye turn on and then the pusher kicks out. So this will be another tall box. It pushes that, that this way. Now this short box is not gonna push because the photo eye does not get made, okay? So just keep that in mind. So this is basically a box sorting system done with a conveyor system and a simple pusher. Uh, and again, we can start and stop the system just by merely pressing the stop push button. As you see, the conveyor is no longer running. If we wanna start it back again, we can start it back again. It's just that simple. Um, with that said, again, this is just using, again, the XIOs and XICs and then OTEs, right? OTEs being our outputs. So just like you see right here, if I push a start push button, you see the light come on. That is an OTE right here. Um, this is an OTE, this is an OTE, and that's an OTE, right? So that's outputting some information, right? So, and again, you can use a, a tag. These are all controller tags. These are all controller tags and basically, uh, all the controller tags are like you can control anything from uh, well the possibilities are basically in, uh, endless as far as that goes meaning if I'm using conveyor 3 uh, underscore reverse right here and I'm, I'm controlling that with the OTE I can use that same bit in an XIC or XIO to actually utilize that to control something else in in the term of in rung 1 that's what we're doing so uh, again, so we're verifying what we've controlled up here is actually part of the process of controlling something else in the very next rung. So um, as you can see, this next one will come in, photo I1 will come in, and then the pusher will index out and then uh, come back in, right? So it, as soon as it pushes out, it, it returns back in. And how it returns back in is this pusher indicator. So there's a, a proc switch on the end of this pusher that lets it know that it's actually, you know, actuated out or, you know, actuated in, All right? So once, um, you'll see this right here, as soon as it goes out, this bit will go high and then unseal that. So basically we're using seal in circuits again, and then we're unsealing it with uh, a said bit or said function, in this case, an inductive procs. Um, and that's basically how that process works. So I, I think by actually, you know, using this and using this 3D simulator, you can kind of see the best practices and how things are working. 
Now, uh, with this said too, I'm teaching this way because again, the industry is in dire need of automation techs and the more we can teach and more we can grow and help each other, then the better we're all gonna be. Because as the industry moves to the industry 4.0 and gets out of the industry 4.0 or uh, 3.0, basically what we're doing is we're, all the engineers are going to be more data driven. So we're gonna need more technicians. We're gonna need more uh, automation systems techs. And, and again, when that role gets many different names these days, but ultimately you're gonna to need to learn automation, you're gonna to need to learn PLC controls, and you're gonna to need to learn how to do this stuff. So this is why we're trying to actually break this down in fundamentals and break this down as the components are. You can see them one by one. And I think adding the 3D simulator does actually help. So let's hit the e-stop and show that the e-stop works as well. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot on this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.